the template for hypothesis testing will be applicable to all hypothesis testing that you will meet in your life, whether in your undergrad, master's, medical school, or any other level of education that you will be dealing with validating a hypothesis using observed data against a theoretical expected probability distribution. So to illustrate this, we will start with the means test. You need to pay attention because the concepts in here will be applicable to all forms of hypothesis testing that we will discuss in this class. So for hypothesis testing, what you need to understand is the need to identify a priori or before you start with a study on the level of significance that you would like to adopt, which is the significance level alpha, which is the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis when it is true. So that will be the false positive. Okay, now, where do you get the level of significance? The level of significance will be determined by the researcher and it will be based on related studies for the specific research, which means that you are trying to contribute to the knowledge bank in that subject area, particularly in that specific um, in that specific phenomenon. So if let's say everybody in your class is using 0 0.05 and you just um, without thinking adapt the same level of significance, that really is not a very rational mode of determining the level of significance because you need to verify if for that particular area all the researchers that you were able to access the results of maintained 0 0.05 if in that area of study the researchers that you were able to access the results of maintain 0 0.01 or 0 0.025, then you need to follow in their footsteps. Unless you are a pioneering researcher in that field or you are a specialist in this field, which means that you can dictate on the level of significance because any expert researcher will have their um, reasoning for why they have adopted that level of significance. So for hypothesis testing template in this class, we will adapt the five-step process. You can collapse this into four steps or you can collapse this into three, okay? But to be very clear about it, we will have to go for the step five, the five-step process. Okay, step one will be the declaration of the null and alternative hypothesis in the declaration of the hypothesis, which will be the null and the alternative, what you really will have to decide on first will be the alternative hypothesis. This is what you really would like to verify. The alternative, and I mean the null hypothesis is a passive statement, which means it simply is a declaration of equality to that threshold that you have declared in your alternative hypothesis. So if you would like to say mu is less than, that is what you would like to verify. If you're saying mu is greater than, then that is really where you're starting from, okay? And you can also adopt the two-tailed test, which is that mu is not equal to. Normally, we do not adapt this because you're either verifying a less than or a greater than. This 
mu not equal to means you really are not sure where the phenomenon leans towards, towards the right or towards the left. Okay, so still you are qualified to adopt this third alternative hypothesis. Okay, so in step two, what you need to declare now will be the test statistics. We said that in any hypothesis testing task, you really are looking at two probability distributions, that which is theoretical and that which is empirical. So in step two, what you're declaring in here will be the theoretical framework. It's like the the structure from which you would like to view your research results. If you look at this as analogous to taking a picture, that will be the declaration of how you would like to take the picture. Are you going to are you going to mask the background and then focus on the person that you're trying to take a picture of? Or would you like to mask the individual and focus on the background? So this is how you try to make an analogy. So in here, for the means test, our choices will either be a Z test or a T test. So for the general, the general declaration of a Z test, then we just will have to look at the sample size n. If n is greater than 30, then we adopt a z test. If n is less than 30, then we adopt a t test. For a z test, we don't need the degrees of freedom. For the t test, we need the degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom will simply be n minus 1. Okay, and also for step two, you need now to specify the level of significance because level of significance and which, I, which of the two options you will select will now be the basis for step three, okay, which will be the declaration or determination of the critical value. When we say critical value, this will be the tabulated value that you will have to generate either using the Excel, Excel <clears throat> stat application or, <clears throat> excuse me, or the table of values. <clears throat> so if we're looking at option A, which is a Z test. Then we will have to look at the Z value at the alpha you have specified in step two. If it were option two or B, which will be a detailed a T test, then you will have to use both the alpha declared in step two and the degrees of freedom that you would have dependent on the number of observations that you have generated for the research. So for step four, so for step three, we have the theoretical value. For step four, we now have the empirical value, which will require computation based on the results of your study. So this will be the Z test will be the square root of N times the quantity X minus mu over sigma, okay? And in here, this will be, okay, let me make the correction in here. This should be X bar, which is the mean, and then minus mu over sigma. So if you notice for the Z computed and the T computed, we have the same formula, okay? But it will now be dependent on the results of your study. For step five, 
this will now be the declaration or the the inference based on step two and step three. So we compare the value, the theoretical value of the test statistics using the computed value of Z computed or the T computed, whichever is applicable. Okay. So the mnemonic device that you will have to refer to would be you accept H sub zero when the test statistics, okay, that you generated in step four is in the unshaded region and you accept the alternative hypothesis hypothesis if it is in the shaded region. So if we make this more friendly, let's call our code. So HO for unshaded, HA for the shaded region. Okay, so now let's look at a specific means test to test at alpha 0 0.04 that weekly rainfall is greater than 315 micro units. Okay. So in step one, we declare the null hypothesis, okay? And then what do we do? We said greater than, that is what we would like to verify. And therefore, this alternative hypothesis will be declared in that perspective. So greater than. And that's a greater than. And we call this the right tail test. Okay. And then the null hypothesis will simply be mu is equal to 315 micro units. Okay. So in step two, we determine or identify the test statistics. Okay. For this illustration, I'm just saying that n is equal to 20. Let's make that in here. Twenty observations, okay. And let's This example lacks information, but let's just um, make corrections in here. Let me recompute this. Okay, so we have 20 observations, that's n less than 30. Therefore, we will apply a t-test and our degrees of freedom will be 20 minus 1, which will be 19. Okay, so for step 3, we now will have to look for the critical value of the t-distribution. Okay, so how do we do that? You know how to do that. So that means we have to look at the 
tabulated value of the t distribution at 19 degrees of freedom and alpha equal to 0 0.05 okay so we need to look at so what do we do t tabulated value at alpha equal to equal to 0 0.05 and df equals 19 or df equal to 19. So what do we do? We go formulas, more functions, and then, and then in here, we need to have the t distribute the distribution right okay so we have probability equal to 0 0.05 and degrees of freedom equal to 19 and what we have will be this value okay so if we bring it down to four decimal places that is the value that you will get so it's negative 1.7291 okay if you're going to copy from a completed value you need to uh, rewrite it otherwise if you bring it to another application excel will not recognize that because you are getting out of the spreadsheet that you originally worked with. Okay, so let's now look at Okay, so what we have if we compare that to what we got, that's negative 7291. So four decimal places okay so for those without um, the excel stat application what you need to look for will be you need to go to the table of values of the t distribution and then let's show you what that one would look like you wait for the t table of values okay for the t table of values
So if you would like to get the T value from a table of values, you need to go for this column will be the degrees of freedom. This is the row that you are interested in. And you look for the intersection with the alpha in here. Our alpha is 0 0.05. Therefore, what we really would like to get will be the intersection of these two values given out in step two. I mean, step three, which is alpha is 0 0.05 and degrees of freedom is 19. Because this table maintains three decimal values, it will be correct up to the third value. And then that T tabulated value for alpha 0 0.05 and degrees of freedom 19 will be 1.729. Okay, now in here, oopsie, oopsie, wait. Our alternative hypothesis is right tailed. Therefore, this is the right value, which is positive 1.729 because the T distribution is symmetric. Whatever is on the right at the same point will be equivalent to its inverse in the left portion for the same uh, distance from the middle value of zero. So now this reminds us that what we have in the notes will be corrected, okay? And so in here, Our alternative hypothesis is greater than, therefore, the T tabulated value should be positive in there, and that should be positive. Okay. Let me explain why, with the Excel, what you got, sorry for shifting, okay, what we got in here was negative zero negative 1.7291 because the yung t distribution if you follow what i'm doing like that it's a symmetric distribution so um the excel statistics apps will only give you half of the t distribution when you're sure that you're on the left which is a left tail test, then you automatically adapt that. But when you're sure that you are working on the right of the T distribution, you just make the negative become positive. Okay, so that's how you need to remember things. Okay, so let's proceed. Okay. Now, this means that for step four, we needed, we needed to compute the tabulated value for the T, which in this, um, in this example is equal to 3.133917. Okay, let's rework this so that the computed is given out to be this value okay so what is this equal to this one is equal to the square root of the square root of, we have 20 as n times the value of x bar, which is the mean for the observation, minus our mu was 315. And then that means that will have to be divided by sigma. OK, 
Okay, so for this example, the values are not given out. So let's just assume that we know all those values and when we input them, and when we inputted the givens, we came up with the value of 3.3133917. Okay, so now what do we do to be able to come up with the conclusion? So in here, Okay, so the alpha of 0 0.05 will refer to the shaded portion on the right because this is a right-tailed test, okay? And our T-computed referred to the T-tabulated of 1.729 will be a distant away from 1.729. So it will be somewhere there. And that will be 3.1339. So ano nga sabi natin in the template? When the T computed is in the shaded, then we need to accept H sub A. Okay. So in here, for step 5, we say that the alternative holds, which means that mu is statistically significantly greater than 315 micro units, which means the mean weekly rainfall okay, exceeds 315 micro units for a sample size of 20. Okay, and how sure are we? Of this conclusion, we are 95% sure that this conclusion holds because, oops, because this one is, so we say that it is statistically significantly greater than 315 at 0 0.05. In making the conclusion, you do not forget declaring at what alpha the conclusion holds because changing alpha might change the conclusion. So for purposes of um, full credit in any hypothesis test, exercise without the alpha technically the conclusion will be wrong okay so what do we need to bear in mind okay so when we work on a study what we need to be very critical of will be first how are we sure that the values generated by the 20 observations are true, okay? So if you hire someone or if you ask someone to help you with the, with the measurement of each observation, halimbawa, these are rain gauges that are spread out in Mayon Volcano and you're not good at hiking or going up the mountain and you require someone to help you read the values on the rain gauges, make sure that those who need to help you are able to measure it properly. Kasi diba yung if it's a rain gauge and it's a container, 
the measurement will have to be the lowest point of that uh, of that cast. Like the water does not really level off. There is a portion on the edges that's higher than the lowest point. So what you read off will be the lowest point, not the highest point. Okay? And that, the 20 observation gauges, if they are labeled, are the ones that they will pick out. Okay? So this will have to be part of the, the requirement that you are able to secure that the data are reliable values. When that, that cannot be validated or justified, all of the process in here are simply wasted because the data are not reliable or credible data, okay? So let's have another example of a means test, okay? And we have a BS Bio student who has identified a plant species that has potential use as a nasal spray against viral infection, okay? That enters the body through the nasal canal. And Preliminary studies, pre pre preliminary tests done by the same bio student identified for him or her that 20% liquid extract of the lips has the most significant antiviral efficacy potential. Okay. So what does that bio student do? That student cultures the virus. Which virus is this? The one that he has identified, which enters the nasal canal. Okay? And he, she prepares 25 petri dishes of this culture. Okay? So you know the microtechniques. If they have taught you this, that when you, when you spread it, in specific petri dishes, you need to be consistent with how you spread the virus into the petri dish with the nutrient culture in there. And then so we're saying equal amounts. Why we're saying that? Because we don't want the um, petri dish cultures to vary significantly in the amount of viral, uh, viral, I don't know how you count them, okay, that are in the petri dishes. Okay. And the bio student observes the zone of inhibition in the petri dishes. Why? Because he now pipettes these petri dishes with the plant extract, the leaf extract of that plant species that he has identified to be a potential antiviral nasal spray. Okay. So what do we do? We work on this data. And then we will have to compute for the mean. So we need to have the x bar, which will be the mean, the standard deviation. And we need to identify n. n in here is. 25. These are the values that we need to compute from the given data. So let's now form the hypothesis test. Okay. So this student would like to be more stringent, more strict 
with the validity of the conclusion by maintaining an alpha at 0 0.01 that the mean inhibition of the herbal extract on the viral 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 colony in the petri dishes is less than five square millimeter okay. so in here this is the active statement so it is less than and that's a left tail test okay so that's how we frame the alternative hypothesis and the null hypothesis just adopts the five square millimeter and then maintaining the equality and this one oops okay is this 35 one okay this one pala n is 35 sorry for that okay so n is 35 and that's greater than 30 therefore we have a z test okay so how do we now find the value of the z test So again, we go to the Excel. So we need to find the Z tabulated at 0 0.01. And this will be left field. Yes. So we need to go formulas, more functions, statistical, and then we need to look for the norm with the S. So norms, okay, inverse, and so we have 0 0.01. The value in there is negative 2.326 and so on. So that's the value that we have. So we have negative 2.326. Okay, three decimal values. That is what copy. Okay, so our tabulated value from the Excel with three decimal value will be that and it validates the value in your notes and then for step four we need to compute for the z computed value okay so previous computations has given us okay mean at 4.737, standard deviation at 1.337, and N at 35. So for the Z computed, we have square root of 35 times 4.737 minus 5. Where is minus 5 in here? The minus 5 comes from the declaration of the of the null hypothesis which is that mu is equal to 5 that 
is where we took our new. Okay. So from there, we computed a Z computed of negative 1.164. Okay. So for the determination of where our Z computed is with respect to the Z tabulated, our Z tabulated is negative 2.32635 and then our Z computed is negative 1.164. Okay, so if you get to see it, our Z computed is in the unshaded portion. Unshaded portion means that we accept H sub zero. How do we frame now the declaration of the conclusion? We say that the mean zone of inhibition for the plant herbal extract on the viral culture is statistically equivalent to 5.2. 0 square millimeter at alpha equal to 0 0.01. Suppose we take this phrase at alpha equal to 0 0.01. That conclusion is technically wrong because if we adopt another level of significance, this value of the Z tabulated will not be negative 2.326. It could be somewhere greater than negative 1.164. So I need to emphasize that so that no one complains if he or she misses on the declaration of alpha in the conclusion, okay? So kindly now try to perform the test on A, which is species E, and then letter B on species Q. And then the third exercise will be for this. Kindly work on that now. Okay. You have your notes and you can look at the values for easier computational tasks. Okay, so are there questions? Do you have questions, Paul? Questions? Are there questions, Paul? Are you listening to me? Yes, but ma'am. Okay. Are you going to work now on the practice set? Okay. I, will, I will give you how many minutes? 15 minutes. And then we will show the solution. Okay, Pa? <laughs> Okay, kindly work on those.